Hello everyone, Inventor719 here, and in today's video we are going to be making a little rocket launcher that launches these 12 gram CO2 cartridges. So what we're going to need for today's video is what you see in front of us, which is a broom. We will just be using the metal broomstick handle. Your ammunition, which is these 12 gram CO2 cartridges, as well as a 14 millimeter socket a matching nut and bolt that goes inside the socket, a 14 millimeter wrench, some drill bits, countersinks, a little pin or thin metal rod will work as well. We have a vernier and a few other common tools not pictured. So the first step is to make the barrel of our launcher which I will be using the broomstick handle here. This is a hollow broomstick handle and as you can see if I pop off the end cap here the key is that the inner diameter is about the same as the 12 gram CO2 cartridge. If it's too big it'll wobble too much and too small it won't fit through. I'll be going with around a two foot barrel, uh, maybe about a foot and a half. So once you have a length you like just go ahead and use a hacksaw and cut her down. No need for your mom to get upset because once you finish cutting your barrel just put the little end cap back on the broom and she'll never know the difference. Now before I go ahead and make the firing pin system, let me quickly run you guys through how it's going to work. So basically the socket here is a 14 millimeter 3 8 drive, which is not important socket. And it, I got very lucky, it snugly fits right in the end of the barrel or the tube just like this. Now essentially with it flush I'm going to go ahead and weld it in there and then what will happen when you grab your 12 gram CO2 cartridge place it down the barrel just like that you can see the very tip of it which is this part right there and when that is punctured it will act like a rocket ship propelling itself through the air. Now to puncture that seal what I've decided to do is use a nut and bolt and I'm going to be welding this nut inside the socket like so and then by sharpening the tip of the nut you will be able to screw it in and it will slowly protrude like this until the very sharp nut pierces the end of the 12 gram CO2 cartridge but to prevent the cartridge just from being pushed up the barrel what I'm going to do is figure out where the tip of it is drill a hole sideways through the tube like this and then using my pin right here, you will be able to slide the pin in, tighten up the bolt, and then once you remove this pin, it will go flying through the tube. Alright, let's get going. Quickly before I start welding, I realize this is the first time I've ever shown my welder on these videos. This is just a very, very cheap, like $200 Mastercraft flux core and MIG welder. Right now I am running flux core in it as I'm out of the gas for MIG welding. So don't be a big old judge about my welds because they will not be pretty. So that's now welded in there. It got a little hot unfortunately and burned through one of the socket walls. But it is never coming out that's for sure. Now the last thing to weld on this end of the project is the nut so I can get some threads on that socket. I'm probably going to have to file her down a little bit because of the welding. But it will essentially go in the end just like that once I hammer it in. Then I'm going to go ahead and weld the nut in. And then using a grinder I'm going to go ahead and make the tip on the bolt. So here is the final product of the barrel and there is the firing pin screw 
and the assembly does work as I originally envisioned. Basically, you screw the screw into the end of the barrel, and at some point it'll bottom out, which is when it penetrates the CO2 cylinder. And I did some testing off camera. It does penetrate the cylinder, but because it is such a slow penetration, basically all the air just slowly leaks out, and then it like slowly comes out the end of the barrel and just falls on the ground. But we're not going to give up on the rocket launcher concept, so let's try one more thing. So for the second version of this prototype, we're going to be replacing the screw style firing pin for a pellet coming out of a pellet gun. So I have two pellet guns here. I have a pistol over there and a brake barrel rifle. And we're going to be using the rifle today because the pistol's barrel has a little... A uh, piece of plastic on the end, so it'd be pretty much impossible to attach our aftermarket cylinder barrel to this piece. So let's put that guy aside. And so what I'm going to be doing for the rest of this video is basically using the barrel we already created, as it does work very well for holding cylinders and puncturing them in this end here. And we're going to be using this little piece of tube to adapt this barrel here to the barrel on my pellet gun using some tape and I know it looks a little sketchy but I'm gonna go ahead and assemble it and then we'll go outside and do some shooting tests so there you can see I have taped the two barrels together using the connector some tape and some glue obviously this is not similar at all to my original design I wanted the original design to be handheld it would have been like half as long and pretty much different in every single aspect but I wanted to make this modification and hopefully still upload this video after a successful shooting test to show you guys the design process and instead of maybe making it a separate video I'm going to try and still include that first section to show you guys that it doesn't always work out exactly the way I wanted it the first time so hopefully it was enjoying, enjoyable to watch the progression of this project and let's go outside now and get to the shooting test and hopefully get some good results. Alright, so here we go with the shooting test. I've broken the barrel and then like any normal pellet gun, let's go ahead and put in our pellet. This is going to hopefully rupture the seal of the cylinder. Then once we close the barrel, I'm going to go ahead and load in my 12 gram cylinder nose down. It is gravity fed, so I'm going to have to keep it up at a slight angle. So let's go ahead and move the camera up with it. It is raining, so hopefully we don't get any water on the lens. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just fire this. I'm wearing my safety glasses, and let's hope everything goes as planned. Firing in 3, 2, 1. No puncture. So I am using ball nose pellets. I wish I had some pointy ones. Um, as you can see it did dent the end of the cylinder but did not puncture it. I'm going to try once more. If not, I'm going to have to pick up some pointy pellets. Alright, here we go with the hollow point pellet round two. Firing in three, two, one. That worked amazing. I don't even see where it went. Let's see if I can go find it. So I tried my very best but could not find the cylinder, so I'm going to be shooting another one for power right at that um, piece of styrofoam straight in front of the camera. Alright, I've got another one loaded in. Let's see if it can puncture it on the first time right here. Might have to wait for that chicken to move. Alright, so that's better. So, here we go. At the styrofoam, line it up in 3, 2, 1. That was a little bit interesting. Chicken did not like that. That one looked like it got punctured on the side and instead of going straight, turned into a little whirlwind. If it looks cool in slow motion, I'll play it back right now. That's very cold. Yep, just how I thought. It punctured just on the side of it. You can't see on the camera, but it punctured just on the side. 
and went for a little whirlwind. So let's go ahead and try one more cylinder. All right, here we go with the final shooting test. Let's see if we cannot hit that styrofoam this time. Got my pellet and canister loaded in. Lower it down so it doesn't fall out the barrel prematurely. Firing in three, two, one. I missed, but it did go quite a bit farther. Let's see where it went. All right, there's my target. I think it went over here, hit the chair, rebounded, and there it is right there, freezing cold, stuck to the wet grass. These get really cold, and you will probably burn your fingers if you don't wait for them to warm up a little bit. So we were shooting from right beside my car right there, and we made it all the way over here to the chairs. So not a bad distance, but the first time we shot it from that same spot, I swear we hit like that tree right there. Really depends how you puncture the canister. All right, everyone, so I really hope you enjoyed the video. It's starting to pick up raining over here, so I'm gonna stop the shooting testing there. Let me know if you guys wanna see me do it again, maybe with some pointy tip bullets or bigger CO2 canisters, doesn't matter to me. But as always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.